Howdy folks, it's Dalturl here, and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're about to enter our final leg of the Australia Southeastern bus trip. I assume you've seen other bus trip videos with me for watching the final leg of one, so that's all the introduction you get. Let's get flying right away here. Okie dokie, repair and refuel for the final leg. Let's zoom this out a little bit, it's kind of close. I want to see where we're going. Whoops, wrong way. Go the right way, please. Thank you very much. Alrighty, let's have a look outside and see if we have enough runway. Do we need a back taxi? There's a little bit of a hill there. I think we're going to back taxi to that hill. Just to give us plenty of space. Always so looking around. There are the mountains back there. We're in the foothills. You might recall all this from the previous video, the previous leg a few days ago. But let's hop inside. Now let's read about what we're doing. We're going to end up at Yankee Mike Echo November. Quite a long, like 42, 42 minutes, so I'm expecting about an hour for me, all said and done. Uh, let's see, we're going to head pretty much south or west-southwest, and then more south is more west-ish, more west, and uh, so pretty much pretty much west. And then up in a big town, Melbourne. Okay, cool. Alrighty, let's see first little part here. Lake Eildon. Lake Eildon. After returning to the air, fly southwest and pass over the expansive Lake Ilden, formed by the Ilden Dam, which holds back the Goldenburn River, which obviously is this lake right here. That's going to take us a little bit. Then once we get to the river, then we will read about that. I don't want to get too far ahead. Alrighty, so let's see. What did it say anyway? It said 228 degrees for six and a half minutes. So let's put that like that. And 228 degrees, which is about there, right? Yes. Oh, let's hear this ugly thing. Came back when I restarted the sim, and let's put this up. We don't really need the timer because we know where the lake is, so we'll start the timer on the next leg. Alrighty, so let's see. Let's back tax a little bit. Let's do our taxi view, which we haven't used in a long time. Oh, you said a flaps down too. Because, and parking brake is on a bit. Yep, come on. Parking brake is off, on, whatever. Um, you cannot turn off this HUD in a bush trip because it's kind of like, um, you know, a mini game, everything's preset, you can't change anything. But in a free flight, you can turn this HUD off. And I do. It makes it hard to do sightseeing views. So, anyway, all right, here we go. Back taxi. Man, that was really rough to get going. All right, we'll turn around now, so let's hop inside. We can see what we're doing, and as soon as we turn around, we're just going to take off. So let's get a roll going here. There we go. Turn and burn, Cessna style. <laughs> turn and burn is fun. I've had to do that. Coming out of Los Angeles. Not sure what airplane we had, but it was pretty big for the runway. It wasn't Los Angeles. Well, it was um, um, Long Beach. And we did a turn and burn. It was pretty crazy. I loved it. Alrighty, here we go. Up we go. Come on. Come on, there we go. Alright, brakes to stop the wheels. Flaps coming in. We'll set up autopilot in a minute. I just want to hand fly my way out of here. Because it's fun. There we go. Nice and steep. Not actually not that steep at all, is it? <laughs> We've got a lot more room to spare here. Alright, let's make our turn right away now that we've left the airport. Let's set up autopilot from way back here. Nope, can't make use of the buttons from back here. Alright, we're going to turn towards the lake and cover it, or go over it, at this heading right here, because that's what it said to do. 228, start the rollout. There we go. The co-pilot is going to tell us a few things, and while the co-pilot is telling us a few things, let's set up autopilot, should have done that on the ground. We're using the heading bug today, we're going to climb at 800 feet per minute. There we go. But we are hand flying still because we can. All right, cool. So we're going to do this until we get to the middle of the lake. There's Mansfield, by the way. And once we cross the middle of the lake, then we will read about the next point of interest. But anyway, you know the drill. Um, sometimes they talk a lot. Sometimes they don't talk very much. For this lake, because it's so long, I'm not going to talk very much. So let's get autopilot engaged right now. I talk less when we do autopilot because we do more sightseeing. And when I hand fly, I talk through everything. Alrighty, once this co-pilot is done yapping at us, there we go. We will move over to sightseeing. So there we go. We're going to climb. Whoops, I didn't put an altitude in. 
I didn't put an altitude in. We're gonna do five. What do we need? Do you think we do four thousand? Let's go to five thousand, and I'll come down if I need to. Yeah. All right, there you go. Sightseeing time. I'm going to keep an eye on the vitals here because it's kind of shaky. But um, enjoy the sightseeing. I'll see you in the middle of that lake. Okie dokie, we're over the lake, a little bit past actually because I was enjoying the sightseeing too much. So now we're going to turn to 194 and set our timer so we can hit six and a half minutes. Let's go one whoop, down please to 194. There we go. All right, Cathedral Range State Park. Follow course to the southwest of Cathedral Range State Park, home of the Cathedral Range, a small aspect of the Australian Alps that are defined by steep faces along a distinct Razorback Ridge. So about six minutes, we should be able to spot a steep Razorback Ridge. Maybe it's this. I don't know. <laughs> An island. All right, my regular watchers, you know the island stuff, but I'm going to say it again because we have not talked about islands in a long time. In real life, I love islands around water. I don't care for the ocean and beaches, and I don't care for the deep, dark woods, but I do like islands. Why? Because... There probably aren't many big, scary animals on the island, if it's deep enough around it. And you can see everything, so nothing can surprise you. And you can hang out, and you won't have scary animals, and you can maybe go a little bit of skinny to bend. It's required, I say that, at least once per bush trip. And it's safe, and secluded, and awesome. Can you tell I'm from Minnesota, the upper Midwest, because that's something we would be interested in. Like this rocky shoreline. Beautiful just beautiful all these houses down here jealous and envious there's a difference I'm envious but anyway I'm scared of really big animals <laughs> I'm not scared of people I'm scared of big animals so whenever I'm in a rural area especially when it's dark well they got their own little thing there I get really scared about um, animals coming to get me I don't know why I've never been attacked by an animal or anything and I know animals are more afraid of humans than we are of them blah 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 but I'm petrified so to be on a little island I can be in nature and not be scared of animals there's another one right there those are close enough to the shore though the animals can probably get out there but anyway that's my island story I tell it every couple bush trips haven't been a while since I mentioned it and there you go alrighty so we're looking for a sheer cliff face which I'm assuming is this right instead of six minutes out we've been Yapping for two, so I'm going to be quiet for the rest of it, and I'll see you when we get to Cathedral State Park.
So we're not quite there on time, but if you look, we have some sheer faces. So this has to be the park. I'm confident this is the state park we're looking for. Whoops, let's use this view maybe. <laughs> there we go. Not that complicated. Well, a little bit more complicated than real life because you're not moving your head around, but you get the idea. It still looks nice out here in the foothills, plains area. So as soon as we get over this ridge, we will um, change our course to the next heading as described. And then have a log, but let's head outside together. And just have a look while we take on the terrain turbulence. Good grief. But that's, that's life for you, right? I think we're pretty much below terrain in the background, so I like that. I like flying among the terrain or within the terrain. Not above it too much. Just checking out the views here. Very cool. There's some hills there. Some power lines probably right cut through the trees. Okie dokie, we're about to hit these sheer faces here. So let's hop inside and let's see what we're going to do next. Um, we are... I wish these would stay collapsed like they used to. Alright, here we go. We're going to turn 240 degrees. So let's restart the timer. And let's go 240, which is quite a ways this way. So we'll look out the window to enjoy the turn and then we'll read about it in a moment here after we've made our turn and get kind of dizzy <laughs> wow alrighty um in about four and a half minutes we're going to whoops we're going to go to the Murandini scenic reserve which is renowned for its beautiful forests beautiful forest which is all up here because that's definitely four and a half minutes out so right here probably pretty straightforward and easy so instead of jumping back in after that let's keep reading a little bit more here so we're going to look for some forests and then we're going to turn a little bit more and then we're going to go to the two land two langy two langy for you two langy two langy forest notable for its strands of towering mountain ash trees Okay, so we're going to look for some forest and then some ash tree forests, and then we'll come back together to talk about King Lake. So, quite a bit of science for you, in about four and a half minutes I'll change the heading bug on my own. So there you go, the next couple sections of our flight, of our leg anyway, the final leg of the bush trip, I'll see you in a moment. Okie dokie, it's about time to turn towards King Lake, so let's restart our timer. And we're going to set for 250. 
2, which is to the west a little bit more. Where are you, 252? There we go. Let's read about it. Actually, let's look out the window and enjoy the turn view. I like turn views. That is quite a turn, too. And then you come back up, and then you get to see the sky again. And the deserty hills. Alrighty, let's see. It says King Lake. Um, west of Merindini Scenic Reserve lies the small town of King Lake. So there's a small town out there about four minutes away. Um, okay. <laughs> and then what? And whoops, we hit the wrong button. Dang it. And after King Lake is yeah Van Yan Reservoir. Jeez Louise. Yeah, wait, there's this Yan Yin. There's this Van Yin. Van Yan. Okay. The oldest supply of water for the city of Melbourne. So we're getting to the Melbourne, folks. Which is when its construction will be in 1857. was the largest reservoir in the world. So we're looking for a tiny town, which we're probably not going to find because it's a tiny town with no nothing around it to look for. But there is a reserve some distance away. Um, is that what these are? Which way are we turning? We're going from 252 south to... Okay, so... Um, well, there's the ocean, right? Yeah. So, I have a feeling we're going... I think we're a little bit north where we're supposed to be. Because it says there's a reserve, which I bet is this, which at the time, in the 1800s, was the largest. And we're turning south to get to it. Not much, though. Um... Oh, I wish this would stop uncollapsing. Not much south, and that's like a 90 degree turn. So we are definitely not going to hit our town. We're, we turn too soon, basically, what I'm trying to say. So what we should have done is turned here, boom, instead of up here. So let's head towards this reservoir, because we do know where the reservoir is because of, you know, common sense. <laughs> so let's aim for the reservoir, and then hopefully we see the town on the way. That's how we're going to handle it. Let's keep going. There's Reservoir in the GPS. Turn towards Reservoir. And like I said, if we see a town, then there's ocean out there. If we see a town, we see a town. If we don't, we don't. Come on, you can do it. I know it's windy up here. So let's stop the timer because you know where the Reservoir is. And we'll go back to that in a little bit. All right, so we're going to head towards the Reservoir, which is right here. Oh my gosh, okay. And we won't load too much. And there's supposed to be a town next to it. Could that be? Oh, wait, wait, was that it? Wait a second. I guess that could be it. Let's hop outside so we get a better view. Um, okay. That could be our town right there. Or there could be, yeah, because it's four minutes to the reservoir. Okay, I think we accidentally found it, maybe. Huh. Okay. Not gonna complain. So on to the reservoir, which we already read about, was the largest one was built. So, okay. I'll see. I guess I did not screw that up, because that would have been our turn, right? Okay, never mind. I don't know why I keep doubting myself. I've never actually really screwed up, except for the very, very, very first trip. The Yosemite, no, not the Yosemite, the Gold Rush trip in the airplane, because it was my first time doing this, and I was so confused. But other than that, I've never really screwed up. So that has to be the town. Has to be. Very cool. Alrighty, when we get to the reservoir, you'll hear me yapping again. And enjoy the silence of my voice for now. Crank up your headphones and listen to the airplane. I'll see you in a moment. Alright, the reservoir is just about under us. You can see the ocean out there. So let's see what we're doing next while we um, keep going. In fact, our destination is already in sight, but we have a lot to do in between. So quite a bit left. We must be doing some zigzagging around. Let's see what we got here. Oh, we did that. We did that. The reservoir we're over right now. At least I assume 
that is a reservoir. I mean, I could be totally wrong. That might just be a body of water, but I'm assuming it's us. I don't know. Maybe it's that other one. Um, who knows? It could be that one. I don't know. I'm not going to cheat and look on Google. We're doing the best we can, not knowing what we're doing. Yarra River, head to the south-southwest to the Yarra of the reservoir for the river skirting the outskirts of Melbourne. Um, okay, so there's a river here and a river here. So if that's the reservoir, this is the river we're looking for. 185, which is south. Um, hang on, 185 is this way, 221, 257, 232, 182, and 336 to Yemen. I don't know. I think we screwed up, to be honest. Cricket Run, follow the river, the largest stadium in the world. And this is where it goes like five seconds, two seconds. So then we go around. So let's do something quickly here because I'm totally going to screw this up. Let's get this thing way over here towards Melbourne, because we're east of Melbourne right now. And let's see if we can figure this out. So we're looking for a cricket, a place to play cricket. Where was it? Cricket Grund, the art center. Right after that is Eureka Tower, and then there's Australia 101, the highest building in Melbourne. And then right after, seconds after that's Port Melbourne, and then there's Airport. So... All of these things to see in Melbourne, and they're like all right next to each other. So what all we can really do is um go towards Melbourne, Mel Melbourne, go towards Melbourne. Oh my gosh! And American United States Ian trying to say these words. And we're just gonna look for stuff, and then you can pull up Google Maps and Google what we're looking at. So we're gonna head towards our airport and just see what we find along the way, basically. I think that was a reservoir. Had to have been now. Anyway, we're going to go all around through here, this area, and then we'll land at the airport. How about that? So let's come down because we are way too high to enjoy the sights. So let's go all the way down to... Ooh, no, let's go to 2,500. Let's go to 2,700. Um, bring back throttles. So we're going to overspeed. There we go. Well, my chair just rolled away. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go this way, see if we can see anything. Okay, there's tall buildings there. Airport is over here, so we're supposed to go here and then look for stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this other river, which is probably the correct river. See? <laughs> Once I looked at the headings, I realized this was our reservoir here. Just because of the headings. I should have done that when we were back here. Um, yeah. So anyway, did not need to use Google Maps. So I just looked at the headings, which I should have done. Anyway, we're going to go to the river, and then we're going to head into town. <laughs> town. <laughs> yeah, look at, look at that little town over there. Go over the river, head towards the town, see if we can see any of the sites, and then we'll head to our airport. So I'm going to close my mouth for a minute and let you go fly to the river in peace. And then you'll hear my voice again, and we'll fly towards the town, look for stuff, and that's the plan. I'm not sticking to it, but that's the plan right now. Enjoy, and I'll see you in a moment. All right, we went past what we're supposed to do because I was having way too much fun <laughs> looking around. Um, I really want to hand fly now, but at the same time, we can't look out the window with the drone because my drone controls are my yoke and pedals. So let's turn, and thus I lose control of my aircraft. Let's turn to the south for a second, and let's just look around outside on our own. That could be a stadium. I doubt it, though. But that could be what we're looking for. We're going to look around here just a moment, then I'll hand fly after we look around. We're heading into town to check out the sights. And then... Sorry, I'm just gazing and enjoying my super high frame rates, even with everything cranked up to max. 
just about everything. Everything that matters anyway. Wow. Alrighty. Cool. The foothills of the mountains. Oh my goodness. It's nice to see some urban stuff though after all the rural parts of the bus trips we've been doing for the last couple months. There you go. Very cool. Alrighty. Um, let's see here. Let's hop inside and put this away. And we know where our airport is, but we know we're going to look for stuff. So, how do we want to handle this? Um, I think we'll hand fly in a moment. I'm just trying to get as much sightseeing done as I can with the views that we can use. So here we go. Let's turn off autopilot and let's descend. No, let's not descend. Let's see where we're at. A little bit more throttle here to speed up. We don't need to slow down. Whoa, I went to trim down two clicks and then nose me like way down. What the heck is up with that? That was weird. Now I need to retrim everything. Yeah, I know our RPMs are in the red, but come back a little bit. A little bit? There we go. Alrighty, so we're looking for some tall buildings and other stuff. We're going to have to look from the airplane. Unless we want to deal with the chase cam, circle cam, I guess. With the HUD that you can't turn off. Yucky, yucky. And there's a little, like, park there made out of trees. That's really cool. Oh, that HUD, I'm just ignoring it. Unfortunately, I have amazing peripheral vision for being a collaborative pianist, but I'm trying to ignore it. Ugh, put that away. Yuck. Okay. Now stop descending, though, please. My trim screwed it all up. All right, um, do we see our airport, though? Just because, yeah, there it is right there. Right behind the pillar. Okay, that was easy to find. Um, otherwise, we're looking for... Tall buildings, another tower, and those must be those two together. One because their heights are very close, 975 and then 1,000. And the bank, there's the art center, which would probably be down here. And then we know it because, see how they stick out like a sore thumb? That means they're handcrafted. See, they look different than everything around it. That is how it's easy to tell what they want you to look at. Because, um... It sticks out like a sore thumb. <laughs> well, not a sore thumb, like a thumb with a bright cartoon band-aid. How about that? Alrighty, enjoying the urbanization with high frame rates. Cannot complain about that. Oh, man. I um, did watch Quaid Pilot's Sim Update 9 video on how to tweak settings, and I didn't really need to change anything myself, and I'm totally fine. Um... So, I don't know. Your mileage may vary. He has a 3090. I have a 2080. Because that's what he could get when I got my computer built. Could not get a 2080 Ti at the time, but it's fine. 32 gigs of RAM. Everything's on SSDs. OS drive has the flight sim. My storage drives actually have my other games to make room for flight sim. <laughs> City pool there. And everything is fine. There's only specs I know. Oh, I have a, a 8700K, which is not overclocked. Stock, stock cooler, everything. So I don't know. I don't need to do a whole lot to get my frame rates in the 60s or 40s or 50s or whatever they are, even in this environment. Not rambling about that, but people do ask me quite a bit. Alrighty, so there's some stuff there. I think there's an art center we were supposed to find over there, which we're not going to be able to get. There are some buildings in a row right there, which is really stinking cool. And these are the tall buildings we're supposed to see before we head back to... Um, you can tell, right? They're the tallest and they're cartoonish compared to everything else before we head back to the airport, which is over there. All right, Melbourne looks like something post-apocalyptic happened in there. And yeah, it looks like a railroad yard that is not being used at the moment. <laughs> see? See how cartoonish those are? Oh my goodness. Kind of drives me crazy, to be honest. Oh, it's kind of frustrating. Why can't they do something with... See, those are two. Why can't they do something with them? Look at that cool-looking thing. So that they're not so cartoonish. Whatever. Alrighty, I wanted to see these buildings in a row, but we're going to have to turn here, so... Whatever. Look out the window if we can. We can't. Okay, here we go. Pay attention to what you're doing, turtle. And let's head back to our airport. 
while we go over the city. We can see the cars now. We're low enough. And those are the tall buildings again. Right over the river. I bet that looks gorgeous. Just gorgeous. When I visit cities... Oh, there's something there we're supposed to see. That bright red thing. Let's go over there. Whenever there are cities and things that um, I go visit, which isn't often. But when I do, I like to rest more than I like to do stuff. Probably because I'm old. Also because my health prevents me. There's a stadium right there. That's a great shot though, isn't it? And I just like to people watch and enjoy things. So like I would probably walk down this road, one of these roads, and just sit on a bench for an hour or two and just look at stuff, read about stuff, watch people. People are awesome to watch. I know like people watching is so cliche and overused to say, oh look at that Ferris wheel thing, that's all messed up. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, I like people watching. Everybody says that, but I really do enjoy it very much. And um, I have very good ears and eyes, so I observe things that other people don't notice when they're watching people. It drives my wife crazy. We'll watch the same people, and I get a totally different thing out of it. <laughs> Ooh, look at the shipping, the containers. That is really cool. This is really awesome. Normally these bush trips, you know, are away from cities and stuff, so it's really cool to see this. I've slowly been losing altitude on purpose. Let's trim back a little bit so we stop losing altitude. We'll head towards the airport now, and then we'll land. And then, um, we'll see how things go. Some apartment living or something there. Getting away from the city. And then... Oh, we're going to go over another little airport. Because that's not an airport right there, is it? Is that an airport already? Well, I guess... Oh, whoops, I was looking for that airport. I was aiming for the wrong one. Yeah, this is our airport right here. Okay, um, we're obviously not going to land on that runway, so let's come down and aim for this other runway. The longer one, anyway. Which one does it imply for us to land at? The long one along the highway, so that's what we'll do. Um, whoops, I was aiming for the wrong airport. Enjoying everything so much. That's okay. All good things come to an end. Right. Some final skyline views here as we make a weird angle to get out to final, or base I mean. Let's trim back, but get some power in there. We don't really need to come down lower than this for the moment, and we don't need to be in flat range yet for the moment. So let's just get some speed back up. But not too much speed. There we go. All right, think we can do this? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a short final, but that's okay. Let's come down. First set of flaps out. Keep an eye on our vitals and our peripheral vision. How's this going to work? Um, we gotta look for the runway. There it is. Um, I don't know, we'll figure this out here. Come down, a short base, and then turn on to final without being able to see anything. If we had a longer final, it wouldn't matter, but since it's such a short final, I really wish I could see. So we'll just use that highway as kind of like our guide. Two sets of flaps now. And it should pop into view right there. All right, a little bit more of a base needed. We'll tack it at an angle. Okay, well, I really, really enjoyed this bus trip more than I thought it would. I mean, I enjoy all of them, but some more than others. But this was nice. Not one of my favorites, but it's up there a little higher than middle of my opinions on the different bus trips. And we're a little high, but that's okay. We're a little fast, but that's okay. We have plenty of runaway space to bleed off the speed. So let's just come down now. Super simple, super easy. Like I said, a little high, a little fast, doesn't matter. We'll come down and round out in just a moment. Don't be distracted by the building to the left. That's a mess. <laughs> Ground effects bumping us up a little bit. That's okay. And here we go. We're actually in the center, too. Let's just grease this one, because we can. Where's the ground? There it is. Throw our yoke back on the rudder pedals. Let the nose wheel come down on its own. 
There we go, flaps coming in, step on the brakes, look for that save icon. We did it, 3 hours and 12 minutes, I'm not sure what it was supposed to be. I think it's supposed to be 2 hours and 57 minutes or something, it doesn't really matter. But we did it, we completed the Australia Southeastern Bush Trip. So like, subscribe, so you know when I drop the next video. At the time of this recording, I have 3 bus trips to do to catch up, and I say catch up in air quotes because... The next update will be a world update, which will probably have more bush trips. So we'll probably never be like totally caught up, but I do want to start sneaking in some other bush trip stuff because we've been doing bush trips nonstop with one exception for like over a year now. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, if you have an idea for your own flight, let me know in the comments below. I did get a comment that started writing out a bush trip or a, a flight suggestion, but then the comment's gone. And I don't know what happened to it. So if that's you, you know who you are. Well, no, because lots of you. But one of you <laughs> wanted to go from Martha's Vineyard somewhere else. If that was you, put in the comment again where you want to go. Because the comment got cut off and now I can't find it. So anyway, there you go. Long outro, but you know the drill. Next bus trip, next video. I'll see you then.